are wanting to learn how to buy a car in full, all about insurance, all about tags, all about budgeting, saving, and what cars to buy, where to buy cars, then you should definitely keep on watching. So, hey guys, it's Aria here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is going to be me showing you guys how to buy a car as a teen in full so before you start life you guys to pause this video go subscribe to my channel and follow me all my social media down search box and let's go ahead and get right into this video one two three fuck it started this video can we take a second and look at my hair because honey this is a wash and go this doesn't happen on my hair this just doesn't happen but we made it happen this is going to be a long video and i'm going to be talking about a lot so if you are wanting to learn how to buy a car in full all about insurance all about tags all about budgeting saving and what cars to buy where to buy cars then you should definitely keep on watching so let's go ahead and jump right into it so for the first category, you cannot start looking for cars until you have a set budget that you want to spend on a car. For young teens and young college students, a realistic budget is around like 800 to about 3000 If you guys did watch my video on me buying my first car, could girl, I just bought her first car. My budget was definitely not that. It was definitely 4000 to 10000 but that's just because your girl be saving. So if you guys want to save like that, I also will be talking about how your girl saves because I'm actually really good at it. Setting a realistic budget is key to buying anything in the world. So the first thing in budgeting is car budgeting. So the first thing about like budgeting is, like I said, you have to be realistic. One thing that I kind of hate about our generation, especially which is Generation Z, even though we lit over here, but we still have our kinks, is that we have so many of us who have made a lot of money off of Instagram and just personal businesses, and we did not follow like our parents and grandparents and ancestors. We're the generation that pretty much just what our our own and made money our own way which is great but that kind of shows that so many of us have done it that it kind of makes it that you don't have a charger challenger mercedes bmw or a 2020 car in general it's just not worth it i kind of hate that because it's just like for a long time whenever i was starting to look into car and getting a, a new car that was that was what I was set on. You have to be realistic with yourself that if you are working a job that is $7.25 or $8 or $9, having a car that's a BMW or a Mercedes or a Challenger or a Charger is just not realistic for us right now. Something else I want to put in about being realistic is that you have to understand that the car that you get right now as a young teen or as a young adult is this is not going to be your forever car. This car is just pretty much just to get you from point A to point B until you you start making those big bucks and you're like in your degree or your career whatever you want to do and then you can start getting those cards for my second tip is going to be making sure to budget for your tag and title a lot of people whenever they go in and they go in for their car they just think about the price that they see but not all the underlining stuff so make sure you have a certain budget for tag and title because it's going to be pretty hefty and then also insurance as well to be on the safe side save at least a thousand dollars over what you plan on spending spending on the car. So say you want to spend like a thousand dollars on a car, you want to save two thousand dollars just to be able to have that cushion for yourself my main thing about budgeting for a car is to look at the whole picture because you're not just buying the car because you might be going to go buy that car but that car might have a problem that you're going to have to go fix and you're going to have to fix and it's going to cost money so that's why i say you should definitely save over a thousand dollars from what you put on saving so for the second tip that i'm going to tell you guys about how to buy a car in full is going to be the most exciting tip and the most obvious tip is looking for the car for yourself so for me if you guys have not watched my video on me buying my first car i'm gonna put it up there it's gonna be down there i bought a, a 2013 kia optimum i'm gonna be honest guys it took me a long time to settle on a car me with buying anything is that i have to know exactly what i want before i even start saving for a car so take your time finding a car and also we're gonna go back into my my first tip of budgeting is the first tip for a car is also be realistic so when looking for a car you shouldn't just be looking on the looks 
so of course you do want to buy a car that's gonna that you're gonna be proud of looking at but also you want it to make sense as well because it can look good but it have a whole bunch of problems look at how many miles are on the car and look at the descriptions that the people give in the for the car or when you go to the lot and buy it there the next thing on looking for a car is to do your research on the car that you want so there is so many cars that are in the world like so many flipping cars that i don't even know of and you don't even really recognize that until you are trying to buy a car and you're like not even really set on what car you want my biggest tip is if you have somebody who does have a car and will take you around i would ask them to go with you to go look around lots the best day to go look around lots especially if you're not trying to buy a car that day is a sunday because they are not open and most of the time you can actually just like go and like look at a car you can't like park inside but you can like get out of your car and go walk into the lot and then go look at cars and then also if you have done that and you still haven't found a car that you really want is to pay more attention to the cars that you see passing by you whenever you are going somewhere that's actually how i found my car and the car that i wanted in my video of me buying a car i mentioned the cars that i was looking at before i even knew what car i was gonna get and i didn't even end up getting any of those cars because when i was like driving around and i would see those cars and i seen like i really didn't like those cars and then like all like one day i was just you know obviously paying attention while i was like driving to go run errands and stuff and i just seen the, the key off the road i was like I want the car that car looks really nice so that's how i found my car so that's something that i would say the best thing to do is to go look at cars to go look around cars that way you can get a better idea of what you want and then also go on youtube youtube is a great place to go whenever you once you have got like a couple cars in mind of what you want it's great to go look them up and get actual people's reaction like i mean a, a dealership is going to tell you whatever to get you to buy a car they're gonna tell you whatever so it's best to go on youtube because people and they will give you like a real person's perspective because that's something about me like i need a real person's perspective like not something that's written down not something that like a guarantee that it all like i need an actual person who has the car is not getting sponsored by anybody to really tell me like what's up with this car like what really happens what happens whenever they hit a hundred thousand miles on it what's something that happens consistently with this year with this type of car like what happens so that's why i was saying to go on youtube to look at those videos to really get a good feel about the car that you might be wanting to get or you might have ideas for when looking for a car i would say since we're so young and especially if you're under the age of 25 is to not really get any car that is a bright colored car because that will make your insurance go up if you don't know if you get the color red and you are under 25 your insurance is going to be through the roof and it's because red is seen as like a fierce or furious car car or something like i guess people drive more aggressively when they have a red car i don't know i don't know but i always heard that that you should not get a red car if you are under the age of 25 so also something that i forgot to mention about looking for a car is this website right here it's called kelly blue book you can go in and you can definitely see the price range of these cars so if you guys want that and you want to see exactly how much the car is and, and like what's a good price for the car definitely go ahead and go on that website so for my next topic it's going to be on why you should not buy from a dealership if you are a teen or a young adult in college my first reason why you shouldn't buy from a dealership is because of financing a car most dealerships they will try to get you to finance a car from this youtuber her name is shelby church her and her twin sister went to go buy a honda civic they had all the money to go buy the car but the person who was working at the dealership ended up talking them to, to paying payments and they actually ended up having to pay more than they would have if they just bought the car in full especially for most people who i feel like they are watching this video they're not not trying to buy a brand new car they're just trying to buy a used car it's just not smart to buy a car from a dealership that is used because it's like you're not getting a brand new car and you're gonna have to pay payments on it so the second thing why i say you shouldn't buy a car from a dealership is because with those car payments comes interest so if you guys don't know what interest is i'm just gonna put like a blank out not too in depth but just pretty much what it is it's pretty much just extra money that you're gonna have to pay on on top of the price that the car was for so how this all works if you are not buying the car in full your bank will actually end up paying 
paying for the car so it's pretty much it's just a loan to you and the car is actually the bank's and it's not yours and you're going to have to pay payments on it each month on that car so with this comes in they also add on interest now I don't know exactly why they add on interest I didn't look that up but if you guys want to go look up you guys are feel free to do it so you know more about it if you do decide to go this route but they will add interest on your car so the third thing why it's not good to buy a car from a dealership is because if you are a college student a high school student or just a person who's not working like a high income job paying those payments are just not going to be a very smart thing to do because it can definitely mess up your credit especially with us being so young a lot of young people mess up their credit really young so it's better just to start very small on your credit and not start off with something so big as a car maybe just do it on gas it's that if you miss a payment or you're later on a payment or something that will affect your credit so the last thing in this section that i'm going to talk about is insurance and i'm going to have a whole section here in a second about all about insurance but the only thing i'll say in this instance why you shouldn't buy a car from a dealership is because you're going to have to have full coverage on the car like me right now with my car i do have full coverage on it but you gotta think full coverage is expensive especially if you're under the age of 25 so it just wouldn't be smart to have a car payment and having to pay for your tag and on top of that pay for very expensive insurance the next thing is going to be on cost so best place i would say to go look for a car and like really get a good feel of a car is facebook marketplace so even though i didn't even buy my car from facebook marketplace i was on facebook marketplace for at least two months straight two months straight i was on there every single day looking for a car trying to figure out what car i wanted car prices everything gears everything like that one thing that i really like about facebook marketplace is that you can whatever budget you want the miles you want in the car make of the car you can put year of the car and the prices on facebook marketplace are usually a lot cheaper because it's usually just regular people selling it it's not actually dealerships selling it so you can get a better deal on a car and more people on facebook marketplace typically they are more honest about like what's up with the car because you know so most people are like that i mean i don't get me wrong people can be not not good people not tell you everything about the car but most of the time like in my case they do tell you what's really up about the car before you get the car so the third thing i want to talk about is savings and this is going to be a very big one so i decided to make like budgeting and saving two different things because saving is a whole thing in itself now that you have your budget now how are you going to save for the car i mean you might have to pay a phone bill maybe you don't even have to pay no bills but you might gotta pay something you might just don't make enough like that was me that was me in high school i was not making enough at the job i was having but you still want to save for a car so the first thing is going to be that paycheck honey so after you get your paycheck and if you don't have a job get a job because you can't buy a car without any type of source of income first thing about the paycheck that's something that i do and i still do is you want to save over half of what you get now now i know that just doesn't seem realistic that just doesn't seem realistic that was realistic for my living situation but also adjusted to your living situation like obviously if you're making more then you'll be able to live off more of like if you're making like 300 dollars every two weeks you can save that 200 and leave 100 dollars for yourself so also going on about adjusting it to your lifestyle is also if you have no bills saving over half is definitely something that you can do but if you do have bills it's all about taking the time out of your day to really figure out your finances if you do have to pay bills you just gotta make sure you save at least 20 percent so i'm going to link down this video that i actually just watched the other day and it's about saving at 18 year olds to 25 year olds and i'm gonna link that down below and i really suggest you guys go watch it because it definitely explains a lot more in depth on savings which i feel like will definitely help if you are starting to look for a car the biggest thing about savings you have to be be disciplined you cannot just go out and eat all the all the time you can't just go hang out with your friends all the time you can't just be spending money on like shoes clothes all that type of stuff because you will never save and the biggest thing that i think i taught myself really because it was always that if i want these things i have to sacrifice something else but i had to make it to where 
I wasn't missing out on situations, but I still was saving. So you have to make sure that you look at your situation, be realistic about your situation, and then save accordingly. So my second tip with saving is something I've never heard from anybody else. It's something I literally learned from myself is figure out what you like to spend more. So of course there's two types of spending ways you can make transactions that is through cards or through actual physical money. With me, I cannot spend physical money like i cannot spend physical money like if i have like if you gave me twenty dollars like that twenty dollars is probably gonna sit for months like literally months but for me when saving for my card that was something that i did like every single time i would get paid the first day i got paid i would take it out and get physical money every single time now i have my friend now she doesn't spend money on a card but she can spend money physical money how i don't know so what she does is that she keeps money on her, on her card because she knows she's not going to spend it so figure out what type of spending person you are if you are both person honey you're just going to be disciplined but if you are a person who you spend more money this way than the other way make sure you save it in the way that you don't spend money and make sure that you are taking out the money the day you get paid the day you get money put that money up do not wait do not be like oh i'll just take it out this day because no you're going to keep spending it take it out put it where you want to put it that makes it better for you to save and you have to be disciplined with it like you have to be disciplined like i know a lot of people will be like watching like saving videos and like trying to see how they get money 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 but won't save right like they will just continuously spend it obviously the stuff that you're buying that money on is not worth more than what you really want also with saving is it's okay if you cannot save over half but save anything you can if they oh your parents just gave you 20 dollars just because they wanted you to have some money put that money up you don't need it if you unless you actually do need it but don't even try to make that ex hold on hold on don't even try to make that excuse saying that you need it because i know i know because i be doing that too no you don't need it like you don't need to have it honey like just go ahead and put it up put it where you don't really spend money like that and keep pushing all right now into insurance so first thing i'm gonna say about insurance is insurance is expensive for us young people it does not get lower until you're about 25 and it kind of sucks it makes sense because i guess we're more risk of getting into wrecks whatever but at the same time it's just a lot of money to be putting on such a young person to pay the first thing i will talk about is the two types of insurances that I know of. The two that I know very well is liability and full coverage. So liability is actually what I had on my last car and that's because my car was so old that it couldn't get full coverage on it. So it also depends on how old or how new your car is. So my old car was a 2003 Pontiac. So it was definitely too old to get full coverage. So liability pretty much is just, it covers if you get into a wreck and the other person's car gets messed up. But if your car gets messed up, it doesn't get fixed, which sucks is it's just like, cause that's, that's kind of like more of the reality for us young adults is to get like older car like that. Like getting, like even getting like a 2013 car like mine, and I'm not bragging about this whatsoever. I just, it's just not very realistic. Maybe like a 2010 at the most, but typically like a 1999 through a 2009 car is very more realistic for our age group. Liability for those older cars is definitely going to be the only type of insurance that you can get. But luckily with liability though, it is definitely way cheaper. I think mine was definitely under $100, which I feel is very affordable for our age group. Now full coverage. Full coverage just the thing that's very expensive so full coverage is pretty much like in the title it covers everything so if you get in a wreck they will repair your whole entire car and stuff like that one place that i would suggest to go to is progressive obviously i would say to talk to somebody who is like a parent or a guardian or older sibling somebody who already has insurance and like get their opinion on what insurance you should get i should just progressive because progressive they took off a lot of money because i made really good grades last year and also because i've never been in a wreck or anything like that and i've never gotten a ticket it took the price went down like significantly so i end up going under my dad's and i feel like if you can go under a parent's it'll be way cheaper it'll be more in the hundreds when i had called this other place i went and i looked up like the cheapest insurance place in my state and literally they were trying to charge me i think it was like 380 a month for insurance and i was like like, what the fuck? Ah! 
And also something I did not mention in the first thing about buying a car finance. If your car is financed, the insurance will be even more than if it if you bought it in full. I didn't they just want money. Don't finance your car if you are definitely not ready to finance your car. And if you can do six months, whenever I was saving for my car, I made sure to save enough for six months worth of insurance. Number four. Now we're getting into the real buying a car, real stuff that you need to know about. And I titled this one, who to buy your car from. So who I bought my car from, I bought my car from an actual person. I bought my car off of Offer Up. Offer Up is like kind of like like a little bit more of a safer version than, than Craigslist because it's just like if you get scammed, there's like rules in place that you can use to get your money back and also the other person can get in trouble. As a person who typically buys their stuff from other people, I typically don't buy my stuff like brand new in store unless it just is necessary. It's just one of those things that you can't buy from other people. I would say buying from other people instead of buying from a dealership is 10 times better and this is why. This is such a big thing. Okay guys, so like I told you guys, I bought a 2013 Kia Optima, right? So my car has about 140,000 miles on it, okay? It's kind of like has a lot more miles. It's not like very low mileage, but for that year, it's pretty okay miles okay not the best but it's not bad whatsoever with the car that i got and the condition that i got it in and luckily for me i have a dad who does know about cars and does know if like it's a good car if it's a bad car so he went through and he did a whole inspection on my car the guy i bought it from was asking 5500 and i talked him down to 5100 so i got it for 5100 but guys that car that car with that many miles that year in that condition goes for ten thousand dollars <laughs> that's why i say buying from somebody is better because most of the time how people are is they want to get rid of it they're either selling it because they got a new car or they want to pay off the rest of their note that they have on that car to get a new car or they just they just want it gone plain, plain simple they just want it gone they'll be more willing to go down on a price more if if it's person to person than going to a dealership because the thing about going to these those little lots that be around or like actual dealership is that those people are trained to get anybody to buy that car so they will say anything they will tell you anything they will do anything for you to sign for that car because that's how they get paid if they sell you this car also with dealerships is that they are a ripoff they are a ripoff even if the car is like in bad condition they will still put it out on a lot and ten thousand dollars and you will have a car note buying it from actual somebody is better but when going to buy it with somebody you definitely want to take somebody who knows about cars with you because if you're like a girl or like just even a guy who just doesn't know about cars having somebody who knows about cars is good because even though like it is better to buy from somebody else when it comes to buying a used car because you actually get to see the person who did drive that car too they might not know everything about the car that's wrong with it they just might be like something i would say like their brakes are kind of messed up but they work in all reality need a whole new brake pad new new brakes need new tires need all this type of stuff because i'm not very educated on cars you know if i was buying if i was selling my own car so that's why i say it is good to have somebody there so they will tell you what you need to do and what you don't need to do and also having somebody with you when when going to buy a car even if if you do get on a lot or if you don't get on a lot is that they can tell you everything that you're probably gonna have to pay to get that car fixed luckily for me with my car there is nothing that needed to be fixed other than i need to get an oil change as soon as i got the car <laughs> The next thing I want to talk about is how to know if the car is good. Say you budget out your money, you found a car, you got your savings down and packed. Now you kind of know who you want to buy it from, where you want to buy it from. Now it's time to see is that car good? Like, is it going to last? So the first thing that you're going to need to do is ask the seller whoever you're buying it from for the VIN number. So the VIN number is something that comes with the car and you can see everything that that car has been through. Get that VIN number because that way you can see everything that has happened to, like has it been in any wrecks? It has to, it didn't need to be in the shop? If so, why did it need to be in the shop? And that is going to be the real indicator if that car is good or bad. Also a good thing about asking for the VIN number is that if they are hiding something, they'll more than likely be able to 
come down on the price because they're like, oh, it's going to show up there anyway. So they're going to know that's going to happen, especially if they got somebody who knows about cars and knows that's going to be a lot to pay for. They're going to go down on that price. So going on with that, with like how people will bring down the prices. Also, look at how that seller or that dealership person is talking to you. Do you have that little feeling in your stomach that they're just trying to sell me this car? They're trying to get me on quick. They're trying to, they kind of seem kind of sketchy. Definitely look at how people, how their body language is because you gotta understand once you buy this car, you bought this car. A car is an investment. Like it's an investment. Like cars are not cheap. Even like an old car, a really, really old car is not cheap. You definitely want to make sure that you are giving your money to somebody that you you don't have to fully trust them of course but you feel like they're telling you the truth because there's a reason why they're acting like that and you don't want to give your money to somebody also something that's kind of like a no-brainer but i want to say it anyway and that is to make sure that you look at everything that you're going to have to pay for for the new car so for me with my new car like i said i had to pay for an oil change and also the guy did put new tires on the back but i'm probably going to need two new tires in the front as well that was the only thing that i had to pay for for my car so whenever you're looking for a car like I, that's why i would say take someone with you because who knows about cars because they can tell you everything that you're going to have to fix on that car what is really going to be the price of that car is, is it just going to be you driving off and that car is good or is it going to be like oh, okay look works good for about a month or two and then you have to put it in the shop so now that you have found the car and the car checks out car is good now it's time to negotiate when buying a car especially from someone else you do want to negotiate even if they say in the description like they're not going to go down on that price here's some tips to make them go down on that price so the first thing that you want you want to look up is how much that car is worth already what is the more the high end price of that car and what is more the low end price of your car to really see if if you're getting a good deal or if you're getting a bad deal so after you have found that out whenever you go test drive a car make sure you go test i i don't know why i didn't say this anywhere in the video make sure you go test drive that car before you even buy it don't be quick to buy a car because being quick to buy a car you're pretty much putting them more in power instead of you more in power because you're the one with the money because whenever you have money people are ready to negotiate so you want to keep in mind that you should be the one that has the more power in that situation the best time to buy a car is whenever it's not immediate for you to buy a car so for me it wasn't an immediate thing i knew i needed a car before i went back to school but i planned on buying the car in july even though i did end up buying it in june so that gave me like an upper hand because it was just like i wasn't rushing so you can really take your time on buying your car the whole process took me two months to buy me a car like it wasn't like a thought like oh i want to buy a car I already have money saved da, 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 da. It, it was a whole process like this is a two month process i'm not saying that you have to take this long but i would say it would be smart to take that long just to do that whenever i was buying a car i read somewhere that it is good for not being in a rush to buy a car just because of the reason that they will have more power over of the sale than you are because it's like they're not stressing they're like okay if you're not gonna buy it somebody else is gonna buy it even if you are rushing for a car don't make it known that you need a car so that's gonna be my second tip when it comes to, i think second or third tip when coming to negotiating is don't tell them your situation if you're saying like i want to buy this car for going back to school or something like that you can do that but don't tell them your situation like oh my other car broke down or oh i really need a car to to work and stuff like that because that just kind of makes it seem like oh okay so they're like in dire need so that means i can be like oh all i'm taking is this and i need it now and i have and they can like lie and say like oh i have other options like i have other people who are ready to buy that car and then you rush and you buy the car and they win so i mean it's not a game but it is game that's why i say don't tell them your situation just like really just keep all com communication strictly on just the car so the next thing i would say with going with that is to let them know that you have more options like to let them know that because if you let them know like before you guys even get to talking about money let them know that you have more options because that way they're like they're gonna start feeling like oh like i want them to buy this car because i need this car gone so you kind of like flip the script on them so it's good to like tell them like oh yeah i was looking at this car i'm looking at that car da, da, da. like obviously say it in conversation don't just be like as soon as you walk up like yeah i got so many more 
uh options like this ain't my first option i'm just like i'm just here like i'm just trying to see what car like you know make sure it's like in conversation like my next thing and the last thing in this section is going to be to be able to walk away from any deal so this is something that my mom told me about is that walking away because especially if they don't have anybody else looking at the car so for my situation the guy didn't have anybody else looking at that car. I was the only person looking at that car. I could even went way more down, but I knew I was already getting like a whole deal. So I was like, all right, don't be greedy. But so I'll just give you guys an example of like what I did with my situation. So I went and I test drove the car. Went to go test drive the car. First thing, I mean, I let him know that I was kind of interested in it. And then at the end, I was like, okay. I said, okay, thank you. I will probably be getting back with you. So that way he knew that I was kind of interested, but I made it seem like I wasn't fully interested. I just told him, I said, yeah, I was like, yeah, I can do 5,100. And you also gotta be confident that this won't be the only car that's available that is at this price. There will always be more offers. There will always be something else that's better. Don't get hung up on if you do negotiate and they don't accept it and they end up selling it to somebody else. There will be more opportunities. There will be more cars that you guys will be able to get. So now on to my last section and that is going to be on buying the car. And buying for the car, make sure that you have everything like the bill of sale and make sure that, that the seller puts on their address and everything because that is needed whenever you are going to go switch for the tag when you go buy a car make sure you don't go by yourself people are crazy and also make sure you do it in a public place and if you are buying in a dealership obviously still bring somebody with you and then after you buy the car I would still suggest to go take it to a mechanic just to make sure that everything is checked out on the car still I have talked for so long and I hope I got all my information that I wanted to if you guys have any more questions that I did not answer in this video make sure you comment them down down below but i hope you guys enjoyed this video please don't forget to like comment and subscribe and follow me on all my social media spots and i'll see you guys for the next video bye I'm good.